Look at Pakistan Star right out in the middle of the track from last to first. What a win this. Pakistan Star. I cannot believe my eyes. I see it. I see it, but I don't believe it. Matthew, do you get tired of talking about Pakistan Star? Do I get tired? Uh, I get repetitive about him. Uh, I wouldn't say tired, just very repetitive. So what uh, could you tell us about Pakistan Star that would make it less repetitive for you? Well, uh, he's, uh, he's been a very quirky little horse and uh, he's been a juggling act to in the mornings uh, and his training educational wise. So we've been, it's been very educational for myself and the boys at the, at the back in the yard. And I think uh, he's, he's brought out new life in, us, in myself as well. It's been, a, it's been a big backstory behind it all into his preparation leading to his first race and his second run as well. So, and hopefully I'll keep going. He seems to almost be a bit of a show off or seems to be playing with you. You know, it's a bit like missing the start, but a bit like playing with you and saying, don't worry, Matty, you know, we're going to get them. Is that kind of true I, that he's a little bit of a... I think you got it more or less on the spot there. He's, he's very, I think he's a very intelligent horse. He knows that he, he knows all about the racing, I believe. And he, he's exactly as you say, he, he knows where the horses are in the field. And I think he does know he's got the ability that he can run them down. I mean, it's, it's very early days, but talking with uh, Felix Kutsi, Felix used to talk to me about Silent Witness, that Silent Witness was so competitive, but he would play games with Felix, you know? It's a bit like he'd want to beat everyone and win easily. You think Pakistan Star is a bit, bit like that as well? In a way, yes, I guess. Uh, I say he, he, he knows how to jump, he knows what he, he has to do. He, uh, if he knows he how to jump, him. why did he miss the start at the last that, start? That last start was, uh, he, he was, he was half length slower than I th expected him to be. Because his first race, he wasn't that slow, I didn't believe. He jumped on terms with him, he just didn't want to muster. He couldn't muster. But uh, he was looking around a lot, he was green and he wasn't uh, controlling himself, his body properly. Whereas this, the second start, we believe he had progressed a lot, mentally and physically wise, that off his trial, we expect him to jump with them and be able to uh, be, be right behind them and, and be more focused. But uh, as I said, with, with uh, his mindset, I think it's just his character. He's got such a strong character that he knows he's following, he knows he's right there in the race, even though he's detached, that he can pick them up quite easily when, he's, when he matches onto them. Can you just take us through that last race? Like, even when he, he was being loaded, he seemed hesitant to go in so can you just take us through again i don't think that's very he was very hesitant he just it's just part of his character again he just didn't want to go in he's just been a bit of a just wanting them to make him go push him in and and didn't want to be want to be a bit of a pushover saying come on if you want me in you got to push me and you got to make me get in there <laughs> a bit boisterous i guess but uh once he got in there he's fine he's beautiful he's, he's quiet uh like i said we expect him to jump a bit better than he did he just half one, just past the gates, so we just half one is slightly sit down, so we missed it by half a half a length or so. But uh, he jumped and uh, he did travel. He felt better in the run, and uh, I was actually having a bit of a talk to him. I, I knew that we, he was fine and he felt fine. He knew he gave me the feeling that he was happy with this run, and that's all I wanted him to be. I wanted to be ha I wanted him to be happy in the run. You were talking to him during yes, the race. Yes, uh, I actually was. When I was, I was a couple of lengths off the, ho the last second last horse, and I was saying, I was saying, ah, it's okay, buddy. We, we'll catch him. We'll run him down in the straight. And then the 500, 450, we're like, okay. Now it's trying to get a bit serious. I give him a bit of a, a click up. He lashed onto the second last horse, and then we, we, we just anchored him out. Uh, let's go kill him. How was he, he when you, when you, when you pulled him out? How was it? When I pulled him out. He gave me a, he responded to me, he was listening, that's why I think he's very intelligent, he was listening to what I think, I believe he was listening to what I was saying, because when I put him out, I went, let's go. He switched his legs and kicked two or three lengths straight away. And he picked them up so fast that I could always see the first couple of horses, the leaders. And that uh, I, I, I took a bit easy on him and he started to idle in front again and take a bit easy. So that's when I gave him a bit, another smack down the, down the backside just to make sure he kept his uh, game on. And then he, he kicked again, 
and then uh, all of a sudden he was like, there's no one uh, in the vicinity of him that he wanted to run towards the, the fence where the leaders were. And that's when I just pulled it through and I just kept having to show him the stick just to keep his, try to keep his mind on the game because he was pulling up. Here he comes, Pakistan star emerging down the middle. Carefree Prince Kingsfield, Marvel hero up the rail. Pakistan star still coming, sweeping to the lead. What an amazing turn of acceleration. Pakistan star race to the lead from Marvel hero. Oh, he's a ripper. Pakistan star. What instructions did Tony give you? Hey, man. <laughs> Be hey cool. Man. Yeah, he said, just ride a cool race. Uh, well, try get him to jump, jump on terms and uh, don't get too far back. But if you're there, just keep him cool, just keep cool, relax, and then let him do his work late. And how about uh, your career after last season, which was inj injury plagued, and you made yeah. a comeback, and now you're riding Pakistan star. So do you attribute this to maybe the fact that you're now a husband, father, your mindset is different? I think so, yes. Uh, when I was off for for a good four or five months, it gave me a long time to, it was very boring, <laughs> but it gave me a lot of time to talk and uh, to think about uh, where I had to be, where I wanted to be properly in this game, how to balance my life, my personal and professional life, and uh, and and how and how far I wanted to get going, and how far I wanted to be up there and uh, push myself to the limit. Uh, but I really want, my main focus for this beginning of the season was to try to get back and work as hard as I could, especially for Tony Cruz, and try to get, push my way back into his stable. As we know, he's one of the leading trainers here, so it's great to have the support of one of those stables. So, uh, and things just seem to just unfold like that. And uh, I'm, I'm very privileged to be on this horse and to be able to have worked with him so far. What's it like working with Tony? Because uh, he can be difficult, right? Uh, early on, uh, in my, when I was an apprentice, it was very, it was very intimidating. I was very young then, I was very intimidating, and I think uh, it has, until maybe the last couple of years, the last season and a half, I think as a, personally, as a, uh, as a person, I, I've grown, and uh, our, obviously our relationship has grown as well. And obviously with my injuries, when I've been out, I've had a lot of time to think that uh, I believe our relationship is very professional. Uh, and Tony, he, as long as you come into work and you show, you turn up and you, you put the hours in, he's, he's, gonna, he's there to support you. And uh, he, he really, and he's said it many times, he really wants to support the local boys and stuff like that. So I hope to be the, his number one call up for that position. Have you thought that if you look at your career, you've had California, now you've got Pakistan, you're a Hong Kong boy, so you're kind of like a United Nations of racing. You've had California memory, right? Now you've got Pakistan star. You're a Hong Kong boy, trained by a Portuguese trainer. <laughs> How more worldly can it get? Oh, it's great. It's great for racing. It's great for Hong Kong racing. It's great for everyone. Uh, and no doubt myself as well. Um, and I think that all, it all comes down to, I say, working relationships and uh, getting along with each other and, and forging those uh, relationships to to get into those horses uh, from my point of view and uh, just get them stronger and, uh, so we can uh, produce racing results. And what are the uh, owners like? Nice people are here, right? Oh, great people. They're one of the best owners I've met and uh, they, they, they seem very sincere and uh, they seem like a great family. And very devout Muslims, right? So they don't really gamble and they don't drink. So. So who takes the champagne after the win, uh, Tony? I'm, I'm not sure, maybe, uh, maybe, but uh, I, I, honestly, I personally don't really know them that well. But uh, as, as much as I do, they're great people. They always say hello. They, they always seem very uh, devoted to their horses and they love their racing. So uh, I'd say it's a great privilege to be working with this horse and with them and all the connections that are to do with Pakistan Star. Here he comes, Pakistan star emerging down the middle. Carefree Prince Kingsfield, Marvel hero up the rail. Pakistan star still coming, sweeping to the lead. What an amazing turn of acceleration. Pakistan star race to the lead from Marvel hero. Oh, he's a ripper. Pakistan star.